Hey gang, it's Rob. In today's video, we're gonna go over some questions, some answers, and scenarios that's gonna make the test a little less scary than it is right now. So make sure that you stay around to the end of the video and let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. All right, gang, next up is a thousand and two test prep. Let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it. So what to expect? So this is the second part of A+. Plus. So remember, you gotta pass the first part and the second part to actually be A plus certified. On this exam, you need a 700 out of 900 to pass the test and to gain the certification. On this test, you're gonna get multiple choice, scenario-based questions, and performance-based questions. And you're gonna have 90 minutes to knock out all 90 questions. Let's get to our first question. Maddie is currently using software that allows network computers that are not yet loaded with an operating system to be configured and booted remotely by him, the administrator. Which of the following is Maddie probably using? Very good. So he's using a Pixie boot, PXC or pre-boot execution environment. So that'll allow you to remotely install an operating system onto other devices. So gang, if this is your first time being here, this is how we're gonna rock out. Pretty much we go through the uh, question as a family and then I'll give you some time to figure out what you think the answer is, then I give you the answer, and then I'll tell you why that's the right answer, okay? Janice had a critical failure on her drive. She is trying several fixes to no avail. She then uses a blank on the disk that helps to restore the factory settings of the OS. Janice fully understands that this will revert the OS back to the way it was when it was shipped. She believes this is her only option to fix the issue. What fix did Janice apply? All right, so she used a recovery partition. So the recovery partition is some space that's saved on the drive that when you go back to the recovery partition and you boot it up, it pretty much resets your entire drive back to the way it was when it shipped from the factory. So nothing's gonna be on it except the stuff that was on it when you first, first got it, okay? Hey gang, before we go any further, like this video, and subscribe like this video and subscribe and share with anybody that you think can benefit from it marcus is a network engineer for a local startup he wants to browse his favorite websites without his supervisor knowing he creates a workaround that should accomplish his goal the workaround consists of a server that he connects to then that server will connect to the websites he would like to visit thus making it as though he never connected to the sites himself what type of server is Marcus connecting to? Very good, too easy. A proxy server. So a proxy server is a type of server you connect to it. It's like a go-between, uh, a man in the middle, a middleman that will connect to devices for you so it doesn't actually look like the source that's connecting to it is you. So it can kind of mask your identity a little bit, okay? Gil is a system administrator for Master IT. He wants to ensure that he uses best practices to improve the organization as a whole. Which of the following would be considered the most critical best practices? Choose all that apply. So gang, when you're inside the box, make sure you pay attention to this. Choose all that apply. Choose the best option, choose the least favorite option, choose the least expensive, most expensive. Pay attention to those key words when you're actually going through the questions. So what would be the most critical best practices out of all this list? What are the things that you think that Gil should be doing? You should have said scheduling backups during non-work hours implementing patch management, and last but not least, ongoing user training. 
all right so you don't want to back up stuff when people are actually working on stuff and things are changing it's going to either not back everything up or certain things are going to not get backed up or people may mess up the backup or things may get corrupted so on and so forth so you want to kind of do that when nobody's hanging out a patch management just makes sure that everything is up to date the ongoing user training is going to make the organization the network and the users a lot more security minded and they're going to know what to do when something happens right they'll know what to be abreast of what to watch out for so on and so forth okay mike is a system administrator for ronnie's routers he is currently granting user permissions to a group of new users when granting user permissions he adheres to blank which ensures users have access to only the things needed to perform their job functions So Mike is adhering to the principle of least privilege. So you literally just give people the minimum amount of privileges that they need to rock out and do whatever their job is, okay? A symmetric block cipher chosen by the U.S. government to protect classified information. This cipher is implemented in software and hardware throughout the world to encrypt sensitive data. It is essential for government computer security cybersecurity and electronic data protection what does this describe so one of the key words you could have looked at is government so the only thing on here that's government grade encryption would be a e s all right so like i said before make sure that you look out for those keywords uh, to make your choices a little bit easier okay all right, Jane is currently applying permissions to a file server. She applies permissions to several root folders. The permissions are then applied to all folders in that tree. What is the technical term for what is happening? So the technical term for what is happening is permission propagation. So whatever you do on the root folder or the main folder is going to get applied to all the folders within that folder. Make sense? Blank is an error screen displayed on Windows computers following a fatal system error. It indicates a system crash in which the operating system has reached a condition where it can no longer operate safely. So if you guys have ever got a blue screen with a bunch of numbers on it and a bunch of weird stuff, that would be called the blue screen of death or B side, blue screen of death. Gang, okay, so we made it past the 1002 test prep. Like I said before, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so I can continue to make videos just like this. If you need more practice questions head over to itmasterkey.com which is in the link below the link to the a plus questions and the a plus course is in the description other than that i'll see you in class